Laney friends, I'm Laney. Marshall. And today we have a collab with uh, some ladies I haven't done a collab with in a while, the uh, middle-aged beauties group. And we are actually all doing our different collections or new things or whatever. Um, I will link everyone down below. There's only uh, like four of us, I think, participating, so there's not a lot of videos to watch. But definitely go down and support them. Today, we are doing my foundation and powders collection. Um, if you've noticed, I've done a ton of declutter videos lately. However, we are going to just do a collection here because I don't have a lot of these. Once I find something, I stick with it. I don't tend to uh, get rid of it unless I super hate it. And with powders, it's kind of hard to hate it. Foundation too, because <laughs> um, I usually know like right off the bat and I immediately get rid it of it. It either works or it doesn't. Exactly, and it has a shelf life, so I don't want to hang on to it for a long time and then declutter it later on. So you're going to see that. So let us get started with foundation. First off, let me talk to you about a brush. I'm going to tell you a brush for each one, kind of. For foundations, I use this flat top brush. This is from Echo, Echo Tools. It's like a kabuki flat top brush. I like it because the bristles are really nice and dense, but yet also a little bit fluffy, so I can just get all that in there. Um, or, of course, you use your beauty sponge. This is the uh, container that I found online. This is called Blender L, and what I love about it is it just has, it turns, and you can get your sponge out but the bottom and the side of it have holes so that the air goes in and it doesn't get moldy and then it doesn't make everything else wet this is not a beauty blender this is another off brand i can't remember what it is but i also use that for certain foundations as well so this is the it cosmetic cc plus cream i have two of them i have it in fair and i have it in light i sometimes mix these together and sometimes i just use light on its own fair for some reason i don't know why Light tends to be a like a better color to, to me than fair. Like I always use the lightest one. Fair tends to turn my skin a little orange, even though it's a lighter shade. I have no idea why. Chemical problems? Maybe. But these are really great, especially if I don't want to wear a lot of foundation. I'll just stick that on my skin and then just let it soak in and it's great. It looks very natural. I don't feel like it's really heavy or anything like that. I do also want to bring out while we're doing this is I'm going to be doing a foundation testing video for you guys. Uh, so if there's any foundations that you don't see that I have that you want to see me test, link that below so I can get my hands on them. Elf Foundation Serum and this is in Fair to Light. Uh, I do love this as well. It's very close to the CC uh, creams. It is very light. It is not heavy and not greasy and it lasts pretty much all day. This is the foundation serum one. It's probably the best elf foundation that I found. This is the LA Girl Pro Matte in ivory shade. I actually haven't used this yet. I bought it for the testing purposes, uh, but everyone says the LA Girl foundation is really great, so I decided to try that as well. This is Essence Fresh and Fit uh, in the shade of Fresh Ivory. I think this is the lightest shade in the line. I'm actually wearing it today. It's not horrible. Um, I love the way it feels on the skin, but quite honestly, I, I think it might be too dark for me, just a little bit. And, also, and you know, when we do the foundation video, I'll tell you how I offset that a little bit, but I don't know. The shade itself just seems like it's a lit, like a tiny bit too dark for me. I don't tend to bronze in the summer at all. I don't get yeah, basically. and it does tend, I think it has just a little bit too much yellow in it. I think so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. NYX Total Control in the shade of light. I don't use this very often, but again, this is a nice light one. The, sometimes though, I feel like it makes me a little too oily. I have a very oily T-zone, but I have very dry cheeks. So sometimes I think it just makes me too oily, but it, I like it. Bare Minerals Bare Skin and in the shade of Bare Porcelain. This one I actually got because I got myself color matched at Sephora, and that was on my list. Um, I do like this a lot. I just feel like you have to blend it really well in order to get it to work right. But um, I don't tend to reach for this as often as I should, but it is still a, a nice foundation. L'Oreal Paris in the infallible line. Um, this is in the shade of Classic Ivory 301. This is almost like a moussey kind of foundation, not a liquid one, uh, but it has really good full coverage. This is the Stay Matte in Light Ivory. This also is kind of a moussey coverage. Um, as you can tell, I got this in a swap, but I had used it before and I knew I wanted it more of it. I just haven't opened it yet. This is my go-to 
favorite foundation of all time. I've heard they are discontinuing it and I'm gonna cry if they do. This is the Rimmel London 25 hour uh, foundation. 25 hour? 25 hour. In the shade Classic Ivory. I also got a pump for this uh, from Beauty MP, which is no longer around anymore, but I get a pump for it, so it does have a pumpy on the top, but oh, this makes your skin look so good. I love the ones with the serum, which is probably why I like the e.l.f. one, because the serums tend to make your skin look a lot better. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, and it is in the shade Rose Ivory. This one is weird because it has a paddle. Not a doe foot applicator, it is an actual paddle, but I do use this a lot. I probably this is probably the one I reach for almost every day just because I can swipe it on and then use the beauty, the beauty sponge to blend it out. But I mean I really like this one. Some people don't, but I do. This one I think is actually too dark for me. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD in R23. I think it's too dark. I, I'm still I'm scared to try it because I feel like it might be too dark for me. I really can't comment on this. That is the end of my foundations. Next we are going to talk about powders and I have two different kinds. I've got loose powder and I have the uh, pressed powder. For the loose powders, I got this Real Techniques Kabuki, not Kabuki brush, no, but there's a Kabuki's in the line. But I got this Real Techniques brush, I'm not going to lie, this brush, um, I got it when it was like 20% off and I had a coupon and a bunch of stuff because I think it's like $16 but it's got, it's got this really pretty handle and it is perfect for loose powder because you just dust everything on and oh, it's awesome and you can tell I need to wash it but oh, it's so fluffy and so awesome so if she didn't say it I would that thing is fluffy it's fluffy so fluffy that's the real techniques brush pick it up at Ulta if uh, they have an entire line with like this really awesome purple glitter handle um, but let's jump in I will say that uh, the loose powders are not something that I have used a lot in the past uh, mostly because they make a mess <laughs> I feel like they get all over me, but I decided I wanted to try more loose powders lately and that is why I'm doing this. I don't have many. I'm just letting you know. This will be fast. Yeah. Tart, smooth operator. I haven't used a lot of this. I think I'm still testing it, but it's it's nice. I mean, I don't really see it do anything extraordinary. Amazonian clay. Yeah. Bare Minerals, Original Mineral Veil. I do like their mineral line. I used to use their uh, foundation, their mineral foundation, uh, but I, it, it tended to optimize on me weird. This is not bad. I've only used it a couple times though. So like, I think I use it more for trying to like brighten my under eye than I do anything else. It's got an interesting little pink tint to yeah, it. Yeah, it's supposed to brighten, that's why. Laura Mercier, I guess the top isn't gonna do you any good there. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Mercier, and this is in translucent loose setting powder. Yes, uh, I haven't used this one much either. Um, it, there's no like, I don't know. It just, it just does its thing. I mean, it's good, but it, I don't, I don't really notice a difference if that makes sense. Especially because it's a higher priced item, I just don't notice um, a difference. Yeah, if you're gonna be paying a little bit more for something, you need to see a difference. Mm -hmm. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores. I actually have like three of these. Um, I I don't know why, I just kind of like started accumulating these. Um, I do like this product, but it's in my drawer and a lot of times I just forget to use it because it's in my drawer, but it does blur the pores, which I think is awesome. So if you can get your hands on this, definitely, definitely do. I have two more left and I have to say these are my absolute favorite powders and I just started using them and I absolutely love these and once we show you I'm going to tell you the features of not only the packaging that are amazing but the actual powders that I love. Wow. From Flower, uh, Miracle, Miracle Glow Satin Finishing Powder. First off, I want to talk a little bit about Flower because when Flower first came out, I was super stoked because I love Drew Barrymore. She's the same age I am and I, I don't know, I've loved her forever. So I was like really happy that she started her own makeup line. So I started using some stuff and I was a tiny bit, bit disappointed. But lately, Flower has been stepping their game up and I am excited to accumulate more of the Flower products. So this one right here, um, number one, the packaging, yeah, it's big. This reminds me of like when you go to your grandmother's house and you have the, like the really huge powder puff and you're like all over your face. Okay, so that's what the packaging reminds me of. But this is the smartest packaging I've seen 
on a, on a loose powder ever. So not only is it really good uh, hold on it, what am I trying to say? It's flat on this side, so you can get a grip, okay? So then you take this off like this, and notice that the inside is not that big. The inside of the lid has a very wide wall for a reason. So here's the little puff, and there's the inside of it. What you can do, and I'm not gonna do this right now, but what you can do is you can put a little bit of the powder into the top, then you take your brush, and you swirl it around in there, and you use it, but when you're done, okay, so now it's thick, right? It's tall. That means that you're not going to cause a lot of psh all over the place because you have the walls that are protecting it. When you're done and you still have some left, you have plenty of area to put that right in there because the wall is thick on this side. So that goes in there. And again, no mess. Hello. Smart. You might think it's the hugest thing ever, but hello, that is smart. I was, I was blown away. <laughs> blown away. Now let's talk about how uh, how it is, how it works for your face. Amazing. It blurs my pores. It makes me look glowy and awake. I, I just, I love this. It's, it's a home run. Home run. Love it. One more to go. And she used this one just this morning. I did. For the first time. This is Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder infused with peach and sweet fig cream. Yeah, uh, which explains a lot. Uh, so the thing about this product right here, I did not get it when the peach line first came out because I thought, oh gosh, like just something else gimmicky. <sighs> I'm probably gonna end up buying the entire freaking peach line because I love the foundation. I have two primers, um, the matte palette. Let me tell you, I don't know if it's still available, but on Sephora, they have a sex on the peach kit that I just got. So this right here, will cost you, I believe it's anywhere from 36 to $45. I cannot remember how much it is just for the one by itself. But the Sex on the Peach Kit, you get this, a deluxe primer, a deluxe setting spray, and a full size Better Than Sex Mascara for $35, $36, something like that. So I was like, I I'm getting that. Like that's a better value to me than paying for just one of these and I had been wanting to try it forever. The packaging, I'm a sucker for really nice packaging, and it has really nice packaging. So let's talk about the inside. The inside is nice because it has this, like, lid. I used it for the first time today. So you can pop the lid up like this, and there's these little spikes that fit down inside the holes to the powder. So it, it is very nicely closed, and you don't have to worry with that, like... You know those ones where you have to like twist it and then it gets all messy, but you don't have to worry about that. Plus the holes make the shape of a peach, which is kind of cute. So that is that part of it. The smell. Let's talk about the smell. Everyone said this has the best smell and they were not lying. When I dusted it on this morning, I was like, it's like peach candy and I can almost taste it if that Sounds strange, but that's it, really... It doesn't sound strange because your sense of taste is mostly your sense of smell. It, it it was divine, and then I put it on, and I felt like it really helped my foundation to just smooth out, you know? And it made my skin look better, even though the foundation that I was using was a little bit dark for me. It really helped brighten everything up. Okay. I think it's worth it even though it's high-end. So here's my favorite drugstore and here's my favorite high-end guys So if you're looking for one or the other, this does not have the really nice smell But these are pretty close and in, in what they do for your face. They are pretty close. And, you know if you ever run out in the flower and you're just completely empty You just take another one that you like and put it in that container. That is true. All right, lastly, we're going to do the pressed powders. For the pressed powders, I use this e.l.f. powder brush. It is a flat top, and it's great just for pressing that powder right into your skin, especially in your under eye area. And it's cheap. It's like three bucks. Mac, it's the Prep and Prime. I got this in a swap. And you know what? I don't really see anything great about it. <laughs> I have Frisbee. <laughs> Well, no, no. I mean, it, it's adequate powder. If you're looking for something just to set something, it works. I just don't know if I would spend the money on it if I didn't get it in the swap. So this is the Bare Minerals, and it has two of them in there. One is the matte, and the other one is glow. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so you can do different things with it. This is what it looks like. So obviously oh, this so. is the glow side. I love taking this traveling with me because not only can I mat it down if it's like I'm too uh, like sweaty, but also I can make myself glow as well. Plus the mirror is very nice and big so I can use that when I'm getting ready. I actually really love this. I got this in I believe a boxy charm and it was totally worth it. It's one of my favorites. Um, I, I especially love the matte side. However, you can tell right here on the side of the mat, it is a little bit beige because uh, I would use it on my face and then I would go like this and then I dip it back in and so it started getting a little bit of foundation on there. I'm gonna have to just clean that off. But regardless, this is a this is a great pressed one and the glow actually helps a lot if you have dark circles under your under eye. You press a little in there and it will lighten up in there. Definitely a good one. Maybelline Super Stay Better Skin. And this is in the tone of classic ivory. This is actually my go-to when I don't want to wear a real foundation in the morning. Not only is this great for a powder, but it's also great just like as a powder foundation. And I will just take it and you can tell this is my second one. And there, yeah, I might need to buy another one, but I will just take my brush and just put that all over my face. And it's a, just a really nice, natural, very light way to, to uh, make sure that your red is canceled out. Um, it's a go-to, like you guys should definitely try this if you haven't already. It's drugstore plus the mirror again is very big so you can take it traveling. Photo Elm. By the bomb. By the bomb. This is also Sexy Mama. By the bomb. And I'm doing both of these at the same time because they're kind of similar. This one is in light. Yeah, that one actually is more of a foundation powder. And this one is a translucent oil mattifying powder. Um, but you can tell there's really not a lot of difference in the color of that. The foundation powder is fine. I haven't used it a lot because I collect the balm. And sometimes I like to get rid of my other stuff before I use that first. So that's why there's not a lot of usage on those. They're both really great products. I just think that if you're looking for um, a, a foundation powder itself, Photo Balm is okay, but definitely Super Stay is better. Elf Finishing Powder. This thing is the HD, so it's white. Um, again, I, I say this is a pretty good dupe for the MAC Prep and Prime. So if you're a fan of the Prep and Prime, definitely get the ELF one. I, again, haven't used that very much because I feel like it gives me a lot of flashback when I do videos, so I don't use it a lot. I might actually get rid of that one, but we will see. I'm actually going to do this one because it's a little breaky. So this is probably everyone's holy grail. If it's not your holy grail, Come below and tell me what is your holy grail because I'm interested. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. As you can tell, i am been in pan for a little while. Mine is transparent. It is cracked and broken because I use it pretty much every single day just to set things um, when I want to be matte. And then I'll go in with another powder on top of it if I want more of a glow or if I want to uh, brighten things up. I'll use it on top of this because this is... It's a great powder, but I really wish they would do something about the packaging because the packaging breaks on me all the time. <sighs> I don't like that. So yeah, I really, I really wish. Better packaging, Rimmel, please. My last one is one I got in a swap also. This is the Becca Boudreaux Skin Mineral Powder in Bliss. Um, again, I use this one to glow up under my under eyes. It is beautiful. If you guys like Becca products, it's pretty much on line with that. I don't use it a lot, but I use it enough kind of in between the uh, Bare Minerals ones, but it's also great because I have kind of a smaller size for traveling, so that works for me. That is my collection. Sorry, that was kind of long. But thank you so much for watching. I'll have all my declutter list right up here for you, and if you're new to the Zany family, check out right here and subscribe. Until next time, stay zany. Bye-bye.